I'm Sean, the community manager for Match Day on Discord, and today I'm joined by two of our co-founders, uh, Derek, who is also the CEO, and Sebastian, who is our chief gaming officer. So thank you both for joining us. And to start, uh, if you'd both just like to uh, introduce yourself. So Seb, if you'd like to uh, go first and uh, say hello. Hey, everyone. Uh, how's everyone doing? Uh, Greetings from San Francisco, uh, where I'm calling from today. Uh, it's a real pleasure to uh, see you all. I recognize many names from the from the forums, uh, and uh, you guys are very special to us because you know you are the early community. You are we are discovering and building this together, and so your input and your questions are really super important for the entire team here at Match Day uh, to build something that is really going to be uh, uh, amazing. So just a quick word about myself. Um, I'm I'm from uh, Belgium originally, but uh, born in Africa and living in the US, so truly international. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, been watching watching football my, my, my entire life uh, and developing game my entire life, uh, starting with very, very early games on mobile phones uh, back in the days, and then Facebook games and all kinds of different games at companies that I helped started, which include Glue, uh, if those remember uh, are some of those, 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 uh, those games on mobile phones, and Playfish. Uh, which were a lot of the games on on the um, uh, Facebook and, and uh, social network ecosystems. So super excited about what we're building and super excited to answer your questions around some of the exciting stuff that we've got cooking. Derek, over to you. Hey, everyone. Can, can you hear me? Um, great. Thanks so much for, for being here and joining us on this, uh, on this AMA. I think this is one of the first of um, many AMAs that will come on as, as founders. Uh, quick background myself, I'm a huge uh, football fan. I've been a uh, Manchester United fan for about 25 years. So the past couple of years have been very, very painful. Um, and uh, I've been, I'm also a huge football gamer. I've been pay playing uh, football games since FIFA 95. Did a bit of switch to uh, uh, Pro Evo for a little bit when uh, FIFA got weird. Um, switched back to FIFA. Um, played too many hours of championship manager and football manager. So really it's a, it's a privilege and an honor to be able to um, build Match Day alongside all of you uh, in this uh, in this community as we kind of rethink how uh, football gaming could be like going into uh, this new era that can be uh, enabled by new technology technologies such as uh, the blockchain. So um, with that, thanks thanks a lot for the introduction, Sean. Great, thank you, and thank you again to both of you for joining us. So. Uh... Today's session is going to be primarily focusing on uh, the match day experience with a, a closer look at what it is now and what it could potentially be in the future. So that's going to be our, our main focus uh, when we've been picking out your questions. If you do have something that you want to ask, um, you can put it in the match day stage chat channel uh, and we'll, we'll take a look at those. But first of all, we've got some other questions to kick off. So uh, first one, we will go for you, Seb. Um, just a general idea of what is Match Day? That's a great, uh, it's a great question. So, you know, you guys already know this, so I'm not going to go too deep into this. But, you know, we're really trying to build a game for us all, you know, football fans. Not a game that's going to replace FIFA or Football Manager or any of the games that we mentioned, but a really new type of game that's powered by the blockchain. Uh, and it, we think of this as actually an ecosystem of, of, of uh, games and a community-based uh, uh, experience rather than just a single mobile game. So don't think of us as just like one thing that we're building, but we're building an array of things. And I'll talk a bit more about that uh, later. Great. And so the, the main focus at the moment and one of the main aspects of Match Day is the, the player cards. Could you just maybe explain a little bit more about um, what what the purpose of those is and, and what our players can do with those? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, football starts on the pitch. It starts with a match. That's what we follow. That's where the excitement is. And you think about the match, you know, obviously it's all down to sort of player actions, who has done what, who scored, who, who blocked, who defended, you know. And so uh, the, we have a one-on-one -on -one translation from those players on the pitch to the match day card, right, through our licensing agreements. And so you all can collect cards, uh, um, and that's one of the first things that you can do is to get them. There's many different ways of getting them. You can get them for free, you can send them to friends, you can win them in contests, you can buy them, you can trade them. Uh, and so the, the, at the moment, you know, discovering the cards 
uh, and we uh, uh, is is a, a huge component of like you know discovering the, the matched ecosystem. And we have many 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 more cards to come, and the cards are going to become more and more amazing over time, uh, as you will soon find out. The other big activity once you have cards is you know, uh, to trade them with your friends or with uh, uh, other members of the match day community. So we have a very embryonic version of our marketplace that's already up that you guys have been using. Um, but uh, again, many more bells and whistles that are coming there in exchanging your cards and completing your collection, your specific squad, your specific team, and finding those elusive cards. Uh, this is going to be much more interesting over time because the you know many cards are one-off editions, and so you will see cards if you join the community. You know, and you might, you will all be the owners of like some really special cards from future people who join and will say, "How in the world did you get this really cool FIFA edition card? These are no longer available." Uh, and then finally, uh, the cards will be the gateway to the match day game experiences. So this is the play component. You take your cards and you'll be able to quote unquote you know insert them into our uh, uh, different games uh, and that's where your squad will materialize and you'll be able to actually you know use the card in the game so in web3 speak uh, you know this is nft uh, with utility so collectible value and utility value but the really amazing thing is that you'll be able to transform your cards through the games so as you you, you input your cards in the game what what you know once you finish uh, playing whatever you have done in the game will be reflected in uh, your your cards and that that should prove to be uh, very exciting, and will make uh, for cards to become very very unique, depending on how much time and 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 uh, uh, you spend uh, using them. Yes, it is very exciting. It's going to bring a, a whole new dimension to the uh, the cards and the, the squads that players are building. Um, a few of our users have been asking. Um, I know we we haven't been able to give specifics at the moment, but I've been asking if we can get an idea of when the games uh, may be released in future. Aha, uh -huh. yes. I mean, obviously, this is front and center. We are a game company, after all, so very good uh, question. And uh, for those of you who were there super early during the World Cup, you probably saw like one very uh, uh, lightweight game experience called Match Day Challenge, uh, the FIFA 2022 edition. So this was a lightweight web-based social prediction game, uh, which was released extremely quickly. We really, like, developed this in really no time at all. Um, and so... That's that's a that's a game that you'll see coming back and and completely being transformed and being uh, you know sort of made uh, uh, tailored to some of the community input. So please, thank you for all of those who you sent sent input and feedback on this game. We know it lacked in many different things. We know it was uh, fun in many different ways. Send us our ideas. Send us your wishes. We are listening and we will uh, 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 you know we will improve and and uh, bring back this game for tournaments, including the FIFA. Women's World Cup in July. Uh, so that's the first game experience. The, the next game experience is one that we are talking about just last week with Paul. Uh, 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 the, the, the squad building uh, a component that's coming to the web very, very soon. You'll start to see glimpses of this. You'll start to see screenshots. If you haven't read it, there's an amazing blog post if you missed the AMA last week uh, talking a bit more about that web experience where you can arrange your card in squads and battle the squads uh, uh, between you uh, and other members of the match day community. And then finally, there will be the uh, Match Day mobile game, which is a, a product that will be available for download on Android and iOS uh, as, you know, reading your cards and offering you a different type of game experience. Uh, super excited about what we're building. The studio is based entirely uh, in Europe and in, in, in North America, and we are hard at work on this game. We will be releasing glimpses, uh, creative glimpses of what's, of what's happening. Uh, and we will be putting it in the hands of some very uh, 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 lucky players uh, by the end of this quarter. So uh, by the end of March. Um, so if you're interested to be part of this uh, 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 group uh, that has early access to the game, uh, let us know on Discord and we uh, will try to uh, create uh, uh, access for as many people as we can. And we want you to give us feedback. Uh, we want you to give us your opinion, your thoughts, your desire, your wishes. Uh, even ahead of the game, uh, once we share things, because you have a true voice here and we will be listening and we will, you know, take comments and some we can implement right away. Some we can, you know, uh, um, put uh, uh, as input for later. But this is a true collaborative effort. So don't be shy and let us know, you know, what what is your dream uh, inside this game, what you imagine and also feedback on what we're doing. Yes, definitely. You guys have been great at sharing your feedback so far, and we really appreciate it. So keep it coming because we want to uh, build this game with you and for you. 
So a bit more onto the uh, the technical side now of, of match day. Uh, if I can come to you, Derek. Uh, one of the questions we were asked is, uh, will the games use their own match day cryptocurrency for purchases or will they use an existing one? Yeah, so we are all about making match day accessible to as many users as possible. So that means allowing any of our users to be able to transact in fiat or any popular um cryptocurrencies. Um, so right now we support uh, USDC and we, we aim to, and as, as well as, as, as uh, fiat, and we aim to just increase the number of uh, currencies that we, that we do support. Great. Okay. And then uh, one um, issue that's been being uh, discussed uh, fairly recently on Discord were there were some uh, uh, problems users were having with getting their accounts blocked. So Derek, if you could just maybe explain like the reasons behind that, uh, maybe the reasons for the need for KYC when wanting to withdraw money from the marketplace, and uh, there were questions about the delay in uh, payouts being received. Of course, I think that that's a really good question, and and it's a very uh, nuanced topic. So I'll try my best to to cover uh, all angles. But so what we're doing here at Match Day is to build games for football's five billion fans. And that means building our systems to be friendly to casual users and crypto natives. So that also means ensuring that we build the most compliant and trustworthy marketplace uh, for anyone to trade match the items. Now, this means building new experiences. So for example, as I, as I mentioned earlier, our marketplace allows all of you to be able to pay with both fiat and crypto and allow withdrawals in both fiat and crypto. You don't see this mix very often and a lot of marketplaces either allow you to make purchases in, in crypto and fiat and then only, only withdraw in, in crypto um, or have the whole marketplace be uh, denominated in fiat. So having this, this mix of crypto and fiat treated both as kind of primary uh, forms of, of currencies and, and mo in, in the modes of transactions that we have in our marketplace um, it's very important to us because it just increases the accessibility um, of the marketplace to, to everyone. The downside of that is that the risk of fraud and scams increase um, by, by many times. And our priority is always to ensure that everyone is kept safe on, market, on, on match day to marketplace, make sure everyone is able to have a um, good buying and selling experiences. Um, and that's why we have built in fraud detection systems, fraud measures, and so on. And that can result in delays of, uh, of uh, withdrawals um, as we try to ascertain that this was a legitimate, a legitimate, a legitimate transaction. Um, and also, um, in some cases, we do block accounts if there's high fraud signals. So. Inadvertently, this means that there are some false positives in our fraud detection systems. So from context, our false, false positive rate sits at less than half a percent of our users. But to us, every false positive is too high. And we're always working on tweaking our fraud detection systems to make sure um, that we get it to uh, almost a negligible amount. Um, as for withdrawals, the reason why we need uh, KYC is we want to be highly compliant with the many local financial regulations around the world. Every jurisdiction has a different set of financial regulations, but and most of them apply to withdrawals of, um, of uh, currencies, um, fiat or crypto, uh, around the world. Um, and that's why we need to perform KYC on withdrawal and as well as any anti-money laundering checks when that happens. Um, and to us, again, it's, it seems like an inconvenience, but we think it's so important to be able to build trust in the marketplace um, by also meeting fin uh, local financial regulations, because that means that everyone has that peace of mind that if you're transacting a match day, you're doing it in a compliant and legal manner and that you will actually own the assets that, that you get out of it. And if, if I may, uh, Derek, uh, I just want to share a little story with all of you. Um, the good news is that this is about to get a lot better. Um, so what you're experiencing right now is probably the worst possible uh, user flow, not because we are bad at doing our job, but because 
every single part of the system is new. It's new for the for for the the regulators. It's new for the people who implement the regulation. It's new for the models which are being trained, because you know this is just a very very new thing. So the story that I want to share with you is in the early days when we were we started developing games uh, for mo the mobile platform. There were no games on the mobile platform, and so how in the world did you you know would you pay for anything on the mobile game when you know there, this had never been done? And so we came up with this this idea at the time to send you a link via uh, SMS because you'd pay for the SMS on your phone bill. And uh, the SMS was worth whatever, let's call it 50 cents. And so, you know, if we wanted to charge 50 cents, we just had to send you one SMS. But then quickly we discovered, okay, maybe we can send several SMSs if you want to charge you $1.50, for example, for a specific uh, item. So we started sending multiple SMS. And then, you know, very quickly, this was cumbersome because you'd receive several messages and you'd appear on your bill as three line items for messages when actually what you were trying to do was to buy a game. And so we talked to the telco uh, operators that we were working with and said, hey, can we just have like premium SMS that where we could set the value of the SMS? And we worked with them with these very antiquated systems that they had to bill you know, uh, users you know, the right amount that they wanted to give us. Uh, and so that was a bit better. And then you know, slowly and slowly over time, this evolved into fully fledged you know, app stores with the telcos which was similar to the Apple App Store, but except run by Verizon or Sprint or T-Mobile or, or your Vodafone or whatever uh, your, your operator was. Uh, and there you could, you, could, you could get a charge for the, the game purchase that you just did. And this is very new because the telcos were all about one thing. They were about selling time. And now they had to sell content. Um, I think, you know, the parallel uh, here, of course, this has evolved all the way to like, you know, Apple these days and the App Store is moving onto the device. And you guys, you know, whenever you buy a game or an item, it's completely painless. You don't even think about it. You, you might have to, like, look at your phone to get a biometric, you know, re read. But if you think about it for one second, like, you know, the journey that it took to move to this, like, super low friction is, has been a long journey. Uh, and, and, and it has taken time. I think we are going to go much, much, much faster this time around because, you know, there are so many precedents and everyone wants to solve this. But please, you know, uh, uh, while we understand it can be very frustrating, know that we are working really hard for all of you early community users to solve those problems. So thank you for, for lodging the tickets, for working with our teams, because what happens in the background, we just don't solve your case. We try to educate our partners, the regulators, the, the algorithm, to make sure that this is solved for all future cases. Just because you logged in from, you know, a, a geography that could be otherwise you know, flagged for fraud by standard credit card models doesn't mean that, of course, it is fraud. And so we are telling the, the algorithm, hey, these are legitimate users. It also gives us many ideas that we would love your feedback on. For example, could we verify your KYC status and give you a little badge for being a trusted, uh, you know, member of the community, which is going to be really cool because that means on the marketplace, you can appear as a trusted seller of cards or trusted buyer. And so trust as a topic for us is really, really super important. And if you've got ideas and thoughts on this, you know, please share them. But we are thinking hard about how to make this you know, uh, valuable for you uh, in terms of early members and how we can learn from the lessons of former platforms. Yeah, thank you very much for that, guys. Very, very thorough on that. And yeah, I'd just like to echo what Seb was saying there about thank you for letting us know about the uh, the problems you're experiencing. And thank you very much for your patience as well. We know it's frustrating, but everyone is working very hard to make sure that, you know, we can get it resolved as quickly as possible and give you, you know, the experience that we that we want to give you. Uh, we have had some questions in the Match Day Stage chat channel, but some of those do cross over with the... Um, uh, the ones we received before the chat. So we'll start with those and then come to... Hey, the uh, Sean, uh, oh, sorry to interrupt, but we, we, we'd, we'd love to go to some of the live questions. Uh, okay, yeah, sure, let's mind. do that. Yeah, absolutely, no point, no problem at all. So there's a question from uh, I'm Alex, or I am Alex, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but uh, he's asked, uh, can we provide more disclosure about the partnership with uh, Chili's, the investors in Match Day? Derek, I think that might be one for you. Yeah. Uh, so Shiro's uh, and Alex are, um, oh, they're one of our closest uh, partners. Um, and there are a lot of things that we can do with them and, and the community. So, so we did do a, a small um, 
a small kind of baby step uh, partnership with them during the World Cup, where we um, where we expanded uh, some of the um, the match day offers to their community. Um, we don't necessarily have anything to announce at the moment uh, with Chili's because they are doing tons of things and there are tons of ways that we can plug in. And it's just about figuring out what what's important to uh, to them, what's important to us and our community. So we definitely welcome any ideas that uh, anyone here has about how we should best partner with uh, Chili's and more broadly, Socios. Yeah, and, and I would even broaden this, <coughs> excuse me, to, to many more partners. You might read in the press, on our blog, on our tweet, or on our, our partner's blog, that we actually have partnered with a lot of very cool outfits. And you might wonder the same thing as for Chili's, like, what is the plan here? What are you trying to do? And what I would tell you is what Derek said, you know, we have a lot of plans. Not of all, all of those have been activated. But, you know, there is a reason, there's logic to, to our madness. Like, we are putting this partnership in place because we feel that, you know, everyone contributes to a different part of the ecosystem. And people are doing some really cool stuff, which is really reinforcing the experience. So expect to see more on the partnership front. Expect to see more announcement. And as Derek says, if you've got specific dreams of ideas, we are also listening and we're happy to like bring them to these rooms and to let your, our partners know about some of the, those cool community ideas. But expect more collaboration announcement in the future as we continue to build the product. Yeah, and I think that, and this goes for partners that we haven't yet partnered with. So if you have any uh, suggestions mm -hmm. on that and who we should reach out to, um, please let us know. Yeah, definitely. Anything like that, guys, please keep it coming. It's great help for us to uh, help expand and, and grow what we're doing. Uh, we've got another question from uh, Waza UC. I think this is another one for you, Derek, because we mentioned it beforehand. But will the game uh, be based on the real life actions of football players? Yeah, so there are going back to what Seb talked about um, earlier on where we'll be building multiple experiences. So all the base stats that we will be putting on assigning to our players are all based on real life player performance, how they have been doing in the past seasons. Um, and we do plan to have some of our games actually take into account more real life, real time player events, such as uh, to, to your point, what, have, how, what their current form is over the past five games, were they injured, were they suspended. Um, and to do this, we actually are ingesting data from multiple sources, um, and we're able to pull all this to make it possible. But at the end of the day, it should be that we want to be very, very mindful about how we introduce these real life um, and real time player events into our games in a way that still makes it very accessible um, to to all our all of uh, our players. And Sean, maybe that's a great idea for a future MA, like to have you know a data team engage with the community and talk about this, because this is one of the most fascinating aspects of what some would call the metaverse or the digital twin of the football universe. But we have tens of thousands of exciting athletes on our roster, and we want each of them to feel very, very special from a data perspective. Uh, and so, you know, we have a lot of data coming from partners, sometimes coming from athletes and very, very disparate sets of data from, you know, past season performance to you know, to, 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 to semantic data, to heart rate data, to LIDAR data. How do we rationalize this gigantic data set into very cool stats for the game that feel very unique? In the past, you all know how that was done. You know, you can get really, really basic stats. But what if you could do something different? What if the stats could be dynamic? What if the stats, you know, could include things that, you know, are not typically part of, you know, sort of uh, uh, football simulation games? That's where we want to push the envelope a little bit and we can do this because we are starting afresh and there are many many more data sources today that they were available even five to ten years ago so expect a lot of discussion here uh it, we're going to try and experiment with certain things not everything is going to work but some of the stuff you know is going to definitely push the push the boundary and i think sean we should definitely do a data chat uh, uh, at some stage with this group here Absolutely, we should definitely. I think that'd be a very interesting conversation. So make sure you come back for that one, everyone. You heard it here first. We'll be having that conversation. Um, so the next question we've got um, is another one from I am Alex. I think it might have been one he also asked about beforehand. I'm not sure, Seb or Derek, who's best place to take this one, but I think it's on what will be the uh, 
the function and the purpose of the uh, challenge passes in future? Yeah, I think the uh, the challenge passes that that was um, one of the ways that we really wanted to engage in and to a certain extent identify early early community members who want who really bought into what we're trying to to build at Match Day. So we will we again we don't have anything to announce right now specifically on Challenge Pass, but as as a community team. Uh, is is building out like uh, in the broader conversation of what roles should be thinking about how we uh, as we move towards releasing games in terms of play testing beta testing um, to to get identifying groups of our community who are able to who are willing and are very interested in being more involved in certain aspects of the development match day um, challenge the challenge process and roles and other aspects of that will play a, a big part in in that so again nothing specific to announce now but as we have said about the challenge pass we do intend to make um to give special not special but rather um a different set of experiences to people who do do that and we will also think about how we're how best to incorporate them into uh gameplay as well and and, and think of the possibilities right we this the the original match day challenge pass which some of you got you know, give you access to match day cards, right? Uh, and we did that in a specific way and we received lots of feedback and we had lots of discussions about that. In the future, we are intend to continue seeding different types of passes in different external uh, communities to match day. These can be other digital communities, but, but could also potentially be real life uh, uh, events uh, or football related activities where you can build bridges between the different communities you're part of to get additional benefits. Um, and I think this is very important because we all spend time in lots of different places that relate to football, relate to games, relate to Web3, relate to different, in different parts of our lives. And so we want to engage with this and give, give uh, you and people who are lucky enough to snatch them special access. Think of them as VIP passes that give you something that other people ca cannot have. One of those things we talked about would be access, early access to the, to the game experience. But there'll be others as well, including AMAs with athletes in the future and other sort of uh, personalities and exciting things where we might not be able to fit everyone in one room, but we will, you know, uh, try to uh, 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 sort a roster in a really fun and, and, and um, engaging way. Perfect. Great. OK, thank you for that. We've got a, a very interesting question from Johnny, which I think will relate a bit more to when the uh, squad experience comes in. Uh, what happens when a player retires? Does their car, does their car driver lose all utility? For example, Gareth Bale uh, recently retired, and some players have him as a card. I, I can I can speak to that. So it's actually a very complex situation dealing with uh, player rights, um, but that's the that's the challenge that we are taking on because uh, it's having real players in our game is, is so important to making an authentic experience. Um, so I think it really depends on the players itself because uh, each player has a bunch of, is, we license each player in a different way. Um, and there are also players that we're considering who you would may consider as legends who have been out of the game for a while, but who everyone are very familiar with. Uh, that are also folks we want to bring into the game. Um, and that's a, on a different licensing structure. So without going to very like boring details of licensing, I would say it depend on uh, the player itself. Um, and there will be some situations where um, the player would have uh, uh, will be treated differently uh, in the game because as, as a result of licensing. But that said, our job here, and we have a licensing team at Match Day, is to make sure that. Every player that we do have uh, in the game is able. Um, it's able to be treated at parity with uh, everyone else. And one small thing from the game perspective, uh, Johnny, is if you compare match day to other games, you know when a player retires, this the, the player disappears, full stop, right? Um, and uh, at match day, that's not the case. Uh, we have uh, structured things so that if you have that card, you can keep that card forever. Uh, even if the player retires, even if the player moves on to, you know, the thing, the time that the card was issued is when the rights, you know, are assigned to the card and you can keep that forever. Think of that as, you know, the same thing as if you bought a poster 
uh, or a sticker, uh, you know, from another provider of this uh, physical object from this player. That is kind of how we manage the right. That is very new and very different in the in in the digital game sort of uh, uh, industry. Uh, it's something we're very proud of because the cards that you get are the cards that you can keep. Now, to Derek's point, we're still working out, and it's a case by case basis, what happens inside the game with that card. Um, but the card has many sources of value, and one of it is collectible. So a card that's very special because the player has retired, in my view, is a desirable card because it's a, it, this player has become a legend, uh, so to speak. Uh, how we can use them in the game will depend on the specific arrangement that we have with that player uh, and, and the, the licensing agent, clubs, leagues, etc. Great. So that's good news for Gareth Bale fans. There you go. Even if he is moving on to golf, he's not disappearing from your match day card <laughs> collection. <laughs> um, so we've got another question from uh, Waza UC, and you spoke a little bit about it there, Seb. But he's asked, uh, what determines the values of the cards? Okay, so this is a very simple answer. You. You do. Uh, and this is something that, you know, we really tried to... Uh, 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 to work on from the get-go, this is one of the promise of a match day, is that we don't own the cards, you do, right? And therefore, the value that you assign to the card is not dictated by, you know, some centralized, you know, sort of entity when, in, a, in a room saying this is going to be how much the card are priced. This, the value of the card is whatever you assign to it. And so, uh, you know, let's look at this, unpack this a little bit, what, what I mean by this. That means that if you have a card, and you decide and you list it on the marketplace and you can set you whatever price you want to it and then you will verify that value with you know whatever price the buyer wants to 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 pay for it on the on the other transacting side the value assigned by the buyer can be can come from many different angles it can be purely collectible and emotional because someone is a massive fan of a local player that to you might not be that important but really want to have them in their collection it could be because someone is trying to complete a specific squad with specific attributes and they, you just have their missing card and it, it would take them a long time to get it in other ways. It could be uh, because the card has great utility in the game and uh, you know, people are trying you know, to get specific cards again in, in, their, in, in, their, in their squad. Uh, it could be um, uh, uh, you know, because the card has an amazing history. This could be a card that was owned by someone super famous and provenance is important to you because like, just like you know, some car was just sold by some famous actor, like the, you know, the car has more value. Um, so, uh, uh, and over time, as I said and hinted, uh, and you will, we'll talk more about this in the future, the cards will have a life of their own. They will, they will you know, be reflective of the experience they go through, whether game-like or other, otherwise. And so the cards might be a bit like a notebook that you have of a special, you know, of a, of a player and, and get, you know, sort of get more uh, 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 attributes over time, which make them more valuable. So all of those factors will create a value and it will be up to the marketplace to validate that. And hopefully, like many other you know, uh, spaces, you get data on, on what is selling and what is trending on the marketplace. And frankly, the last component is what happens in the real world. <laughs> because as you know, like uh, when someone just you know, uh, wins a Ballon d'Or or, or is recognized in other ways, the value of that player intrinsically uh, goes up and the interest, and that would be reflected in your cards as well. Um, so it's, it's really going to be a super fun a thing to do, and I cannot wait, you know, for uh, uh, for the marketplace to continue to grow and for more cards and 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 more source of values to be expressed. Uh, but that's something that you know uh, uh, is really up to you as the the owner and uh, you as the buyer to define what the value is. We have no say in that. Great. Okay. So uh, please do keep your questions coming in the uh, Match Day Stays chat channel. But I do have some from uh, users who unfortunately couldn't be here today. Uh, which I'll, I'll, I promised I would ask them for them. So uh, one of them, this is from uh, JFK Legend, who is asking, uh, and I think this is one for you, Seb, how does Match Day plan to cater to and expand its reach in international markets, particularly in Asia? Oh, I'm so glad you asked this, JFK, and sorry you couldn't be here, but uh, here's an answer just for you. Um, we really, really care about international users. Um, as you can probably tell by, you know, just uh, being introduced to the match day team members, we are all from different countries, right? Spread around the world. And so we take, we care about this a lot. Um, and so uh, we also realize that many football fans don't live close to the teams or the players that they, they love and support. And so we want to offer, you know, sort of a, a, a way to engage with those players. So a couple of things we plan to do. 
First is we, you will see us starting uh, large scale localization efforts. So this is, you know, everything from uh, trying to create our content in many different languages that feel very, you know, local uh, to our fans and the Mesh Day community. It also is about, you know, splitting the community here uh, into different groups that have, you know, regional interest or, you know, speak the same language and trying to find and recruit moderators from the community who speak those languages. And this could be language based or it could be club based because, you know, sometimes it's nice to commiserate with your fellow fans about, you know, the ups and downs of your own club. Um, and, and then, uh, you know, it will move into the transaction side, working with those partners, as we mentioned earlier, to make sure that fraud models and payment methods, et cetera, are reflective of the environment that you might be uh, uh, living in. Um, and then, you know, um, uh, 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 finally, you know, trying to make sure that we are as inclusive as possible. That's one of the match day values, you know, for, uh, uh, for players wherever you are based. And what that means is, and this is a, you know, a big promise that we're working on really, really hard, is to bring some of the football world onto match day. So being getting the chance, and this is a magical moment if you've experienced it, you know, meeting, uh, you know, a player that you're a massive fan of in person or like or, or being in the same kind of room as them is just an amazing feeling. Uh, um, and often the words, you know, don't come because you have so many questions, but so little time. And so we hope to recreate some of these kind of moments right here uh, 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 at match day on Discord, wherever you're based. And so this could give you a chance to interact with people that otherwise you don't have physical or geographical access to. Great. Thank you very much for that. We've got another question from uh, XH Mate. I'm not, I think, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but um, it's a question on when will the women's cards be available? And I've also noticed a question we've had previously where someone said, will it be possible to combine the women's cards in the same team as the men's cards? All right. Well, we have to keep some mystery, right? So uh, let me only answer half that question. Uh, the other half we will leave for 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 another day. Uh, what I would say, and if you've uh, seen some of our announcement and our blog post and our and, and our and our presentation, notably at Breakpoint Solana, if you haven't seen it, check out the Twitter thread. Um, we care a lot about women's football. As a matter of fact, we think it's a beautiful form of the sport. The athletes are amazing. The game is super fluid. It's a, it, 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 it feels different, but at the same time, it's very familiar. Uh, if you haven't watched uh, women's football, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's really, really fun. And what is even more fun is that many of us are not familiar with all the athletes uh, that are playing because it's a new uh, form of, of the game. And some of those athletes are just rising to prominence. What's very exciting is the FIFA Women's World Cup that's coming around the corner. Uh, as most of you are aware, this is going to take place in July in Australia and New Zealand, uh, 32 countries, you know, that's over 600 athletes. Uh, it's going to be a really, really fun way to watch those players and to, and to get to know them uh, and to showcase them. So uh, expect a lot of movement on the women's uh, uh, side of the sport at match day. We've already announced, uh, for those of you who have not seen it, uh, our, our global ambassador, Alexia Puteas who is uh, you know, playing at, at Barca, and she is the winner of the uh, Ballon d'Or in two years in a row. Really an amazing player, an amazing athlete. Uh, I hear she's recovering really well from an injury that she had. And so I'm personally super excited to see uh, 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 how, she, how she's going to do. And we have many more of those uh, lined up who are ambassadors and partners of Match Day. So we don't do this in a vacuum. You know, we are really doing this in close collaboration with players on the women front. To answer the specific question, when will you see the cards? Um, we are working with them on those cards and they will be coming very soon. Uh, what you can expect is, you know, something very exciting to play with uh, uh, by the time the World Cup starts in July. Great. Thank you very much for that. And I would have to say, uh, as a, an, uh, an Englishman, the best thing about women's football is having an England team that actually wins something. So that's a very nice change for us. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, we, we've been starved for success. We've got to take it. Um, uh, Derek, I've got another one for you, which is also from JFK Legend. Um, will the name of our team in the uh, squad experience be the same as our account username, or will, be, will we be able to pick other names? Well, without going into too much detail and spoiling as well, um, in a short answer, yes. And we uh, one, one aspect we're considering is 
to potentially allow users to build different quote unquote clubs where you can name them separately um, and use them for competition. Now, this would be, we are still considering a few different options, um, but initially in our first few set of experiences, your, uh, your username will be the name that you would be competing with. Okay, great. Let Thank us you. know. Let us know what you think. This is something we're going to experiment with. So if you've got a particular view one way or another, you know, your identity on match day, your username, how you want to change it, your club names, all that stuff, you know, we are trying to, you know, make a, a, a smart decision, but they will be smarter if you all tell us what you think. Yeah, definitely, guys. Keep that feedback coming. I'm sure a lot of you would have some very creative team names. I'd be very excited to see those. Um, another question about the gameplay. Will the teams have captains? And if so, will the captain receive any kind of bonus to the gameplay? That's from ROK. Oh, um, all I will say, again, is yes, that's the plan. Um, but uh, I don't want to steal the limelight from an amazing game design a team so we'll make sure to you know organize another game here to as near and talk about those game features uh and 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 i'm glad to see the excitement because yes i think we we are on the same team. perfect thank you very much for that i'm gonna bring in a question now from uh lebronson because he is uh He's goading me in the chat as he has been in recent weeks. Um, basically, Derek and Seb, I told him I don't have a goalkeeper. And he's now, uh, he's very much uh, hammering home the fact that he has an amazing squad to me. So let's go for one of his questions. Uh, he's asked, will the results of the 1v1 squad matches be random? Or do the players have stats? And are the outcomes based on those stats? I can take that. And, and again, using Seb's line, we don't really want to to steal the thunder from Paul, uh, but what what I can say, and as as a as a as a preview, is that yes, we um, players will have ratings, and the match simulation engine that Paul has designed will take that into account. So it's the short answer is no, it's not uh, random. And and a reminder to everyone, you know what we call the card, the card right? Someone made the, the, the analogy weaker, but you know, it is a full sort of object that has lots of components in the metadata of the NFT. I think you're breaking up a little bit, Seb. Okay, sorry guys, can you still hear me? Um, so what I was saying, what I was saying is that the card is much more than just a pretty face, it is a full collection of stats uh, both from the player but also from you the gamer uh, and so uh, uh, you know there is a lot of room here to put lots of interesting stats some of them are visible to you some of them are invisible to you but they already exist uh, and they drive a lot of the interaction a lot of the distribution the rarities and all those different things Great, thank you very much for that. Um, we had another question. Um, when will the cards be turned into NFTs? That's also from I am Alex. Great question. And uh, so we will allow exports uh, later this year. Um, again, we want to make sure that uh, we get the games out. There is uh, actually utility uh, to, to our NFTs. And uh, the first chain will be exporting to would be it will be allowing uh, export to would be solana um, but again going back to our mantra that uh, we want to make sure that match is accessible to as many people as possible we will have multi-chain support by the end of the year and uh, if you have a favorite chain if you if you're like hey you guys definitely need to support this chain please let us know um, of course there are tons of chains out there and we'll we can't hit all of them this year but we want to prioritize in conjunction with with all of you yeah, and, and remember, it is super early days, right? Uh, it's super early days for the chains. It's super early days for match day. So keep coming, keep bring your arguments. We might organize this as well. If you've got, you know, if you're fans of specific infrastructure and chains and ecosystem, let us know. Um, but, you know, just like in the early days of, 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 you know, payments, you know, some people only had one or two payment method and now it's completely universal. We are driving towards a goal of enabling you to, 
put your cards on whatever chain you decide. But there'll be a twist. There might actually be impact on some of the cards, depending on which chains you mint them uh, on, uh, to reflect some of the underlying sort of uh, advantage or disadvantage of certain chains, including environmental impact and things of that nature uh, that we as a match day team and all the players that are we working with really care about. So expect more fascinating dis discussions here. And hey, Sean, maybe it's another AMA talking about multi chains and and uh, different sort of uh, impacts that uh, that these chains have, uh, both uh, uh, pros and cons. I think there's going to be a lot of opinions and 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 uh, to be shared amongst the community on this topic. Absolutely, completely agree, Seb. You're doing my job for me. You're filling out the schedule for the rest of the year. I'm very appreciative of that. Um, so yeah, I think we've uh, we've covered pretty much everything. We've covered a lot here today. Um, I just guess I want to pass it over to you, uh, Derek and Seb, if you have any uh, final thoughts or, or messages you'd like to uh, send out to the the people listening. Yeah, for, from from me again. Thanks again for for all your support. Um, we want to build a community that's actually building uh, the next generation of football games. Um, football is a global sport, and we feel like this is a, a new way to really engage fans into creating something that it, that, that from the ground up, right? Um, and I think this AMA was great. It's my first time uh, hopping onto uh, AMA for, for Match Day. Um, well, actually, a piece of feedback what we'll love to, to hear from everyone would be, should we expand this outside of, uh, of, of Discord, potentially to Twitter spaces and so on? So... Let Sean know. Um, Sean, I'm sure you have some thoughts about that as well. Uh, but we definitely want to uh, make sure that we're engaging our community, growing our community, and getting all the feedback that, that, that you have for, for us. So thanks again. And same thing for me. Huge gratitude to, to, to all of you, those of you who are here today, those of you who will be hearing or reading this later. Uh, we couldn't do this without you. Uh, we, you are part of the extended uh, team and family. And so, you know, uh, we do we do listen. We do we do spend a lot of time reading all of your uh, all of your comments. And I'm personally super excited about what we're building. Super excited to share it with you, and super excited about where football is going. Uh, you know, with the rise of women's football, the rise of even you know MLS, the World Cup coming to the US in 26, the Women's World Cup in July, uh, mm -hmm. and all the great uh, activity in between. So there's never a dull moment. And if like me, you know, your favorite club or your favorite team is not on the winning side, you just wait. <laughs> it will change. Uh, and uh, and so, you know, thanks. Thanks again. And thanks, Sean, for coordinating this Amy today. Thank you very much to both of you for joining us. Uh, thank you to everyone in the audience. But yeah, massive thank you to both you, uh, Derek and Seb. It was really interesting chat. I think you've given uh, you've given us some great information. I'm sure everyone in the audience would say the same. So yeah, huge thank you to both of you. Um, yeah, so I think we we would just like to uh, wrap up there. Thank you to everyone who joined it. We will be posting a, a blog post on the website in the near future with a, a summary of the the main points from it. But um, yeah, thank you very much to everyone who listened, and keep an eye out for our next session, which we will put details up up on here and on social media so thank you very much seb thank you very much derek and thank you very much to everyone who listened cheers and bye-bye